to the front, you had a relationship for 10 years. Do you think this is something that can be repaired? I mean, could you no. look at it? It can't? And, and why? Why is it that? Why do you, why do you think you, it can't be you, And it's not even, this is not even about this situation, this is life. Like, when you lose trust in someone, you know what I mean? It's like a marriage. Like, you lose trust in someone, it's like hot, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. Daryl's so, Daryl's on on Daryl's defense. Daryl's been really good to Jay. I agree. Back. I brought you to Houston. Yes. I, I put you in a situation where you were able to showcase showcase your talent. Yep. When you couldn't do it at OKC. Absolutely. So I totally agree. I'm not agree. the one to flip them. <laughs> when you get the you get the, the nets, and then I bail you out again. That's a fact. Now you want to bail on me. Now you want to bail on me. That's I know I shouldn't say it, but come on, my nigga. <laughs> Now, Maury, I got your back. I know what you was thinking oh, when you woke up. Come on, my nigga. I know they say we can't say this. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to NBA Cinema. Well, James Harden um, is still kind of MIA. He showed up to a couple of practices. Um, he missed time at media day. Um, but he has done a couple of interviews since then and he's still You know at this point he's trying to get to the Los Angeles Clippers Philadelphia uh, at this point saying they they haven't come to terms or you know What's being offered the conversation out in LA doesn't make it make sense for them to trade uh, James Harden for what uh, the Clippers are offering them so now it's a matter of whether James is going to show up, you know, because now we're, we're right here at the beginning of the season. You know, it's no longer training camp. It's no longer media day. This is where you, you know, it's, it's time to play, put on. And James Harden has been, you know, distant from the team. And recently, uh, you know, Daryl Morey, said that you know he he's not in philly and james harden's last response to his text was f you and so daryl moore says so it's a, it's a little unclear if he's going to even be available right now and that's regarding being available for opening night so i mean the one thing the one bright spot is James Harden did have some glowing things to say as it relates to um, as it relates to uh, Nick Nurse, the new head coach. Um, I think he prefers Nick Nurse over uh, what Doc Rivers uh, was actually providing. This is what James Harden had to say in the regards to uh, Nick Nurse. Have you been able to talk to him at all and kind of a sense of... Uh, I, I did, I did uh, reach out to him uh, the other day. And he, uh, uh, just via text, just like I would with anybody. You know, I just, you know, just see how he's doing, just see if he's all right. And he did text me back. Has he, get, has he given you the sense of, you know, he wants to return and, and play in games with you guys? And didn't, didn't get into any of that. Yeah, I just was making sure he was okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Well, I mean, it's safe to say that, you know, Nick Nurse got more out of James than uh, Daryl Morey did. I mean, he responded to his text. He said, you know, they didn't really talk about him uh, being back with the team or anything like that, but he did um, get a response from James when he checked on him just to see how he was doing. You know, that's that's a far cry from just a FU that it seems like he gave Daryl Morey. Now, James Harden spoke pretty highly of, uh, you know, of Nick Nurse during a, a interview. Take a listen here to uh, what he had to say. Great. Nick is, uh, is very versatile. Uh, he's a player's coach. You know what I mean? Like, he's he understands it. And... Uh, I mean, thus far, just, you know, I've, I've known a little bit, you know, he was a new coach in Houston, uh, but this, you know, obviously, he's, he's won the championship, and he just sees the game different, and, you know, I'm a fan of him. So, was there any relationship with him? Like, no, nah, it wasn't a relationship, but just having conversations with him these last, you know, few weeks has been, uh, it's been impressive, because he's, 
he knows the game of basketball. And, uh, and so, yeah. Where do you see the most difference between last year's system and Nick's system? I think it's more, uh, more spacing, more opportunities for you know every everyone, uh, and just unpredictable. You know what I mean? Like he literally can change things up on the fly, and you know things in, in one, five, six, seven possessions that aren't going right, or in one quarter he can change it and make an adjustment. Uh, you know, which is, is very difficult to do. Now. The Sixers, this this could not have come at a at a worse time. You're heading into the season, you still um, you have this drama. You have it trading them away, so the team has this cloud, this James Harden cloud, kind of hanging over them. Um, it may be even better to sit him until they can work out a deal, like just get him away from team activities altogether, because. Looking at it, I mean, forget the conference. Forget trying to finish at the top of the conference um, and trying to make it out the, the East to the NBA Finals. Forget that for a second. But just looking at the Atlantic Division, outside of Toronto Raptors, I don't think the Sixers, I think, you know, it could be a scenario where they finish, you know, you know close to the bottom of their own conference. I mean, of their own division. So that may not even put them in a, in a not likely to put them in a play in situation. That's how bad it can get. I mean, you still with the distraction, I feel like they'd be fine if they just got rid of Harden. I think he's going to throw everybody's rhythm off. Um, you know, you got Maxi. I think Maxi's due for a, a, a kind of another leap. He's been getting better and better dealt with the little injuries early last year but i think he is ready for that next step um you still got tobias you still got Embiid. i think you can still finish you know second behind boston in the atlantic division but with harden bringing all these distractions that's going to be the thing each and every game before the game what is harden going to do especially he start missing games now here's the other part about that James Harden would actually be fined $389,000 a game under the new collective bargaining agreement if he withholds his services, which means he, he decides not to play. If he don't play open at night, $390,000, fine. You know what I'm saying? Like... That I mean, even with the as lucrative a contract as he has, and, and you talking about in the NBA where they play, you know, heck, sometimes uh, a lot of times three games a week, you know, from Sunday to Sunday. I mean, you do you really got the money to be giving back a million dollars a week? You know, that's uh, I wouldn't want to do it. I couldn't have enough money to where I want to give a million dollars back a week to stand on to stand on principle or stand on any kind of business. Nah, not me. Not me. Let me get all my money. I'm going to play um, regardless of you know what, what we look like. They're going to have to bench me so I'm not withholding my services. They're just going to have to see that I'm not working with the team. But let me know what you guys think, man. Um, Cameron and Mace are some nuts, and uh, <laughs> but they are hilarious. Um, but I do feel like Daryl Morey probably feels that way. Like, you know, uh, come on, man. Like, you, you, you'd have made a lot of money. We, I, I don't, I don't help, you know, display your talents in a way to where you easily were able to make the All NBA teams and all that to even get those Supermax deals. So, come 